Arena, another great crowd on a Sunday evening as the Kentucky Wildcats hope to improve to 5-1 and one as they will battle the Cardinals of Lamar in the Southland Conference. It's been a season of highs and lows this far for Kentucky. Once number one, and now it's trying to find their way. The dribble alive, pulls up for the jumper. Oh, what? Oh! Oh, are you serious? Are you serious? And there's your exclamation point, Richard. K.J. O'Reilly out of the Bronx, New York, with a big three-pointer. Williams gets a lucky bounce and knows what to do with it. What a win by Evansville. Executed perfectly, made the plays that were there to be made, and pulled off a program-changing upset. Yeah, that had a lot of people talking, including Coach Cal, as he said via Twitter, as I get ready for practice with my team, with some players who can go and some who cannot, we're trying to figure out some things, how to be a threat offensively, how to make more threes, how do we guard five spaced players, and how do we get more consistent in playing winning basketball. And that is certainly what they're used to around here as we say hello and welcome. Mike Morgan alongside the shooter, Pat Bradley. Pat, they certainly, there's always a learning curve with Kentucky this time of year, and you always expect the young guys to have some rust a little bit and a little bit of kinks. But overall, this is a team that still has a ton of potential. No question, as, as one uh, Kentucky staffer put it, it's like Groundhog Day, right? We keep seeing this over and over, but Coach Cal is the best in the business in building the, this, these players into what he wants them to be. It's the building blocks. He cannot skip a step when he's teaching these kids. And he is a teacher. Believe me, one of the best in the country. He had some improvement last ball game. just 48 hours ago against Mount St. Mary's. They shot the ball well at 55%, 21 assists on 30 made field goals and Ashton Hagen's put on a clinic. We do know this much. Lamar is a team that comes in four and one and they don't have a great effort tonight. This could be a dangerous game. Experienced team, they get a guy that can knock down about 10 threes a game on you. So they have got to be crisp with their defensive rotations. They got to identify the ball. One of the key things that they've struggled with is ball screen defense. Talking about Kentucky. I'd be very surprised if we didn't see Lamar try to get them in that early on in this game. It is the same starting five that we saw 48 hours ago for Kentucky, who is it healthy again. There's a young man who's going to fire a bunch of shots. That's Davion Buster, who averages 10 three-point attempts a game. The Kentucky starting five, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Numerically speaking, as Whitney misses the jumper, Nick Richards is healthy. Ashton Hagens is healthy. Emmanuel Quickly, you'll see off the bench, he is healthy. So finally, Coach Cal, knows he's got a full array of players. And we did that, we see that first possession ball screen with Nick Richards. Buster came off that screen. Hagen's coming off a great performance. And a win over Mount St. Mary's. Has it left wing. Draws a double. Looking for help. Finds Richards at the last moment. Now Sestina lines up a three. And Sestina buries the triple. Kentucky has struggled from downtown this year, Pat, but we know they're a better three-point shooting team. There's no doubt, but it starts with that. The, the correct guy shooting the three, but also as a shooter, you've got to be ready to catch and shoot immediately. And an air ball on the other end by Buster. That's a great trap, first of all, by Lamar, only giving up the, the only spot that you could, which was a skip pass. But Sestina does a good job of making himself available. That's another thing that's key. These guys are still figuring out, where does my guy like the ball? Where, where is he best at shooting? And, and for any shooter, you've got to create a passing lane for yourself if you do want to get a shot off. Higgins gets fouled to reach in on Buster. Kentucky did not shoot the ball well, obviously, in the loss to Evans. So, and then only one for 13 in the game after that, the victory over Utah Valley, but it is a team that you watch these guys shoot. I mean, the guy at the free throw line, Maxi, quickly, you just saw Sestina hitting a three. You and I were commenting during practice today, the four looks good, right. and they hit them in practice, they just got to translate to the game. And, and, and that's that's part of it, whether it's an adjustment with uh, an environment situation. Again, some players like to have when you're passing, this is about getting to know your teammates. They like it a certain spot on the floor or when you do pass it to them. So there's a familiarity that these guys are still getting to know each other and where they like the ball. With 5 nothing lead for the Wildcats. Lamar out of the Southland Conference and a bump foul on Richards who says, hey, he ran into me. 
It would be interesting to see the kind of success that Lamar's going to have trying to post up Nick Richards. There's Tick Price in his sixth year as the head coach of Lamar. It was a complete rebuild job when he took over. He's done a good job. Back-to-back 19 -back winning seasons. Former Virginia Tech Hokie as a player. Baseline cut off. Kentucky tight man and man as we're accustomed to seeing. Shot clock down to five. Late clock situation. Richards alters that shot. Sestina top four for the rebound. Here comes Hagens on the attack. Hagens had it stripped away. Quick hands by Buster. And all the way down the floor. Rejected. What a block by Whitney. Holy smokes. Jumper off the mark by Sullivan. How high did Khalil Whitney get? He got as high as he needs to. Okay, there is no limit. He's got the best vertical leap on the team, but that was just ridiculous. Yeah, some guys uh, jump as high as they can. He just jumps as high as he has to. Maxi probes the baseline, kicks out to Sestina. Into the hands of Whitney. Wheeling, dealing, and gets the bucket. 7-0 Kentucky. That was great patience. They look to see where the advantage was. Normally Whitney is going to have it with his size and athleticism. Rick fired up that time by Atwood. Atwood comes in as their leading scorer at 18 a night. Maxi feeds Sestina. You ready to shoot? Move. Higgins lines up a three and knocks it down. It's all going well for Kentucky early on. But that's part of it. You get your big guy in the post who's a good passer. You move around the perimeter to create that open spot, the open passing lane, and then guess what? When you catch, you better be ready to shoot it. Catch it in rhythm. Timeout, Lamar. Wildcats already two for two from downtown. A 10-0 start. And much was made about Kentucky shooting three-point shot. And like you said, these guys can shoot. Sometimes it's just about you get the great passes lead to made shots. Sestina understands that, turns, skip pass over the defense. But he also had two guys. Maxi was there. Whitney was there. So they're spreading the floor. They're being patient. And catch, shoot, and be ready when it comes to you. Now, Hagens was the guy, really, who had to work on that jump shot. He actually tweaked his form a little bit. It was a major project for him in the offseason. He has refined it. The jumper looks smooth. The confidence is there. The defense is always there. That travels with Ashton Hagens. And now he is a guy that is much more lethal offensively. And, and I'm glad you brought up that defense up. L Lamar's sitting on zero right now, a goose egg, okay? And that we, we saw the spectacular dunk by Whitney. But a lot of it is positioning. Kentucky, they can be an elite defensive team. They've got the length to do it, obviously the athleticism. It's just understanding angles, and that's what Coach Cal is talking about when he's built the building blocks of a great basketball player and a great team. You cannot skip any steps. Atwood throws up a prayer, and it's answered. Tough shot by the leading scorer, T.J. Atwood, a junior out of Beaumont, Texas. And, and that's the number one thing for Kentucky in any team. Do not allow dribble penetration and it, because it just causes so much breakdown for your basketball team. And we saw it there. We saw it when they lost to Evansville. Sestina with a walk. Now that is a perfect example. Sestina can knock that down. Didn't he just make a three? Yes, he did. Okay. You're ready. Okay. You know my man Hagens can break down any defense. He's going to get into the blue paint area. Catch and shoot. Right. That's what. Catch and shoot, my man. He just fed it to you on a, on a silver platter. Sir. He passed up an open three for a dribble drive, and he had the happy feet, something we've seen called a lot in the early going this season. You're not going to get away with that like maybe you used to, certainly not the way you do in the NBA, where they allergic to calling traveling violations. <laughs> That's bad for business, Mike. That's exactly. That is bad for business. A pass out of bounds for Lamar. Kentucky ball when we come back. How about the defense and how about the block by Whitney? Uh, this is what he gives that athleticism. A rundown. Is that like a LeBron rundown? Keep going up. That's about as high as I need to go. Play a little volleyball off the backboard. That is how you protect the paint. On Friday, we've got a men's hoops doubleheader for you right here on the SCC Network. Number nine, Kentucky playing host to UAB at Rep Arena. That'll be at 7 Eastern time. And then we'll take it to Gainesville for Marshall. 
and the Florida Gators. The Gators tonight taking on Xavier in the championship game. Florida with a convincing win over Miami before that. Been hot, and speaking of hot and cold, Coach White's team has been hot and cold. They start off top 10 preseason, then they lose at home to Florida State, at UConn, and they blow out Miami by 20, and now will take on Xavier tonight. That would be a big win for the Gators and, for that matter, the Southeastern Conference. This is that time of year, Pat, where it really is one for all and all for one. You want every SEC team to win at a conference game. Yeah, there's no question. It's obviously the depth in the league. We've seen it get better and better over the last few years. And, and there, Although there were some, for instance, Missouri plays Xavier to overtime. Okay, they could have won that game. So uh, there is... I don't think there's any team in the SEC that cannot compete uh, with any team across the country. That is the third three already for Kentucky. Keon Brooks. We saw Keon Brooks firing up a bunch of threes today. Sure did. And what was that, Mike? That was a catch and shoot. That was, I'm ready. I'm stepping into it. No hesitation. Starts with confidence. Shoot the ball. Blocked by Richards. Higgins brings down the loose ball. Numbers for Kentucky. Alley oop to Brooks. Oh my goodness. My. Layup on the other end, beating everybody down the floor. That time was Holmes. All right, here's something Coach Cal can replay. I know he didn't get that block, but Brooks dunks it on one end, alley oop, and he almost catches it on the glass on the other end. That's the, the, that's the kind of hustle, that's the kind of energy that Coach Cal is dependent on when his bench comes in. Special kind of athlete out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hagens thought about it, and Montgomery lost it. Jefferson, no numbers, he just has to reel in the dribble. Uh, there, there is a point in time I realize these guys want to be unselfish. They want to move the ball. Uh, but right there, it looked like the shot was going to go up. Higgins was going to shoot. Who wasn't ready? E.J. Montgomery. Right. So now he catches it uh, 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 in, in a uh, bad situation. Turnover. There's a three knocked down from the corner, and it probably won't be the last for Davion Buster. He comes in averaging over 15 and a half points a game. They list him at 5'10", a buck 50. That is generous. Brooks be ready to shoot that. Quickly on a deep two. Buster. High off the iron and down through the net. Talk about a shooter's bounce. He's living right. He must have went to church this morning, Mike, before <laughs> shooter run. Those are the kind of bounces, bounces you get when you're faithful. You and I ran into Coach Tony Barbie, who kind of acts as their defensive coordinator in a way. So what's the scout? He said, we got to watch out for number 13. He likes to shoot a bunch of threes, and we got to guard that three-point line. There's no doubt. They, and they realize that Lamar understands for them to have a chance. They're going to have to make some they're going to have to make some three. You just have to. That's how you're going to be able to spread Kentucky's defense out. But much like, you know, I know a lot of Kentucky fans probably don't want me to bring it up, but I didn't think Evansville was afraid to come in here. Mm -hmm. And whether it was because their head coach, they know it played here, won national championship here, but they had that edge to them. To come in here and compete with Kentucky, can't be scared to shoot that shot. All of a sudden, Lamar is on an 8-0 run over the last couple of minutes. Nice reverse layup. Great take by V.J. Holmes. And you see Lamar through the 2-2-1 at Kentucky with the zone defense. It slowed them down. And we're playing against the zone. It's about getting in the gaps. Dribble penetration. And Kentucky has that right now. And four guys on the floor. Three guys, the ability to penetrate. Not a great shot by Maxi. Lamar team that actually has a couple of mutual opponents. They also took down Utah Valley and they blew out Mount St. Mary's. Off the turnover, Kentucky quickly in the front court. Strong take and offensive foul, giving up the body. And quickly called for the charge, 11.59 to go. It's Kentucky up by three. 
And this is something in transition. Lamar feels like they can get. They cannot hesitate. Going to be confident. Shooting the three. You're going to have to make a bunch of them. Matter of fact, Buster shoots about 10 threes per game. Got the lucky bounce there. Going to be the harder he works, the luckier he gets. Lucky showing that they can, in fact, shoot the three. Great catch and shot right here by Ashton Hagens. No hesitation. And you see right here, Brooks, again, no hesitation. As Lamar went to that zone defense, you're going to have to make some shots. But here's Khalil Whitney getting up, keeping the ball in play. Great recovery by Sestina and the Cats. And they can be an elite defensive team and not as bad of a three-point shooting team as we're looking at the numbers here. Yeah, I mean, that's the percentage of points that come from it. And again, if that's a Coach Cal staple. He does not like relying on the three. I think he's okay with the low number as long as the percentage is sure. higher. They come in shooting 25% on the year. And already in this ball game, three of five from behind the arc. I'll take that all day long. And, and I should rephrase that it, to, yes, you're right, those, those weren't indicative of uh, how well they shoot or will shoot behind the three-point line just the first and the, and the reality is Mike they shoot more free throws than anybody so right. they're that's what they want to do they get the personnel for that but they also can shoot the three because the more you drive and attack you're gonna suck that defense in you can kick it out for a couple of threes Whitney on a pull-up offensive rebound and a stick back is good for Nick Richards by far and away having his best offensive season thus far. He is, and, and he's just so much more comfortable when he catches the ball. There's no hesitation. Sometimes about court awareness when you catch it in there, especially big guys. What in the world was that? <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> Don't have to tell him twice, Chief. Holy smokes. Well, we were told you had a green light. That is a green light and then some. Sure. And, and, you know, from a Kentucky standpoint, if, if those are the shots that Lamar is going to have to hit to yeah. stay in this game, that's going to be tough all night. That's at least 26 feet away. I love the aggressiveness. Nick Richards hitting the offensive glass to Stina, and we saw Whitney there. Sometimes the coach doesn't have to call your number, call a play for you. Go out and get it. Davion Buster, look at all that, it, we could track all those steps <laughs> that he took, probably a, I don't know, a half a mile he ran from one side to another, that's not easy, he's quick, guys on his offense, they're looking for him, so as soon as he's open, they're going to get it to him, and he's got a quick release. Quickly, that's perfect right Slashes, there. Slashes, fires up, little teardrop. You can see that's the aggressiveness I'm talking about. That gap is wide. Now what happens is you're going to suck the defense in. Now you can kick out for an open three. A foul on the floor called on quickly of Kentucky. Second foul on uh, a talented sophomore out of the state of Maryland, John Carroll High School, son of a minister. Last year, kind of an uneven performance overall. This year, playing with a lot more confidence. Played in all 37 games last year. He started seven of them. And you saw him open it up from the three-point line in Kentucky's last game in the second half, which blew that game wide open. The ability to make a couple of threes. Richards altering that shot, and somehow it goes in. Sullivan will get credit for the basket. It's a two-point game. That zone again, looking to get Guzang in the corner. Good skip pass. Hagan, perfect form, a little too strong on the trigger. Buster is lined up on the right wing, guarded by Maxi. Oh, quick hands by Hagan's, and that was deflected, so no over and back. There, paint touch for Lamar. Can't leave that man open. Buster finally misses one. Yeah, Kentucky's defense got away with one there. Two, they had three guys on the ball. Two guys went to trap. Hagan's on a stop and pop. And Coach Barbie, who's coaching the defense this morning, says, there's one guy we're not going to leave, and that's number 13, fellas. And they left him. 
Give and go. Strong take. Bucket good on the leaner. Tough shot by Holmes. First tie of the game, 19 all. And we welcome those of you who have been watching volleyball. It's Kentucky here on the hardwood. Maxi burying a three. That's the fourth tray for Kentucky. Mike Morgan alongside the shooter, Pat Bradley. The Wildcats try to improve to five and one, taking on Lamar of the Southland Conference who also comes in at 4-1 on the year. There's a steal, scooped up by Hagens. All on Showtime. That was the perfect trap on the post, trying to play out of it. Great rotation by Hagens, understanding now how to work together previously. Got confused on where to trap, who to trap, how many guys on the ball. Buster inventing shots now, <laughs> like a Super yeah. Mario Brothers toss. As this Kentucky defense gets more familiar with him and, and, and how he likes to shoot, he's going to have to pull something out of his bag of tricks that he may not have shot before. And this, this really, Lamar's zone defense slowed Kentucky down a little bit. This is a young man who can shoot. He has not shown it yet, but Juzang has got great form. He gets hammered there. But Johnny Juzang will be a factor for Kentucky from behind the arc this year. Five-point lead for the Wildcats. Seven seventeen to go in the first half. It's Kentucky up by five, 24-19. As we welcome you back inside, Mike Morgan alongside the shooter, Pat Bradley. And, Pat, we talked at the top. It's been a season of kind of highs and lows for Kentucky thus far. This game has been full of highs and lows. Great start. Let Lamar back in. But the, the high that I want to focus on is the three-point shooting. Already Kentucky proving they can shoot the three well. No, they can. There's no doubt about it. And it's about moving the ball. It's about understanding where your teammates want the ball as well. But you've got to be ready to shoot. And you saw that against the Lamar zone defense, which slowed Kentucky down a little bit. And you combine that also with five Kentucky turnovers. And Lamar's made three three-point shots themselves, and they're hanging around. But for Kentucky and any player, the confidence begins with being ready to catch and shoot. With hands ready, feet ready, body ready. Wildcats already four for nine from behind the arc. A big part of their offense in this first half. Zhang stays in the game for the Wildcats. Shot clock down to seven as Hagens directs traffic. Out of the hands of Maxi. Maxi with four to shoot. Back to Hagens. Hesitated. Now Maxi's got to launch a desperation shot. And that's one where Maxi's saying to Ashton Hagens, you got to shoot that. Sure. When you consider the clock in the situation, you don't have enough time. That, that was the best look that, that you could get. I understand Ashton Hagens is, is, is trying to get it back to his guy who he feels had, had a mismatch or maybe the ability to penetrate. But at that time, that was the best look that they were going to get. You saw Buster on the bench with those two fouls. It's been their leading offense thus far for Lamar. We'll see how they do without him on the floor. No dice on that trip. Higgins, Maxi, D3. Legs kick out, and Maxi gets it to drop. And what was he, Mike? He was ready to shoot. Now, we know he's got, he can shoot it from there. He can shoot it from deep. Defense is not, might not be aware of that. Michigan State's is, though. He hit a deep one against them to seal the deal. And a lot of contact, no whistle there. Short jumper is off the mark. Give it the hands of Keon Brooks. That was a nice switch. Communication defensively right there. Hagens. Oh, what a pass to Richards. What a dime dropped by Ashton Hagens. You can see that lane opened up like a sea of blue. And he took advantage of it. Kentucky on a 10-0 run. Side, turnaround hook shot, no. Richards corrals another board. This, this is how the game began, too. Kentucky's defense was on point. And they were up 10 zip before Lamar was able to get a bucket. Uh, and it created some easy scoring opportunities for Kentucky. Six rebounds for Richards, and now the threes are starting to drop in a flurry. And that's a great swing pass. 
Higgins gets it to his guy, Tyrese Maxey. We saw Maxey ignite in New York in the win over Michigan State. That propelled the Wildcats to the number one ranking. It didn't last long, of course. Kentucky trying to get back to the top. Alley you pass, Richards! Oh my goodness! From the feed of Tyrese Maxey, when he's not hitting threes, he's throwing alley oops. After back to back threes by Maxey, now the, the entire defense, what are they doing? They're watching. Is he going to pull up? Oh no, forgot about Nick Richards. Actually, that guy didn't forget about Nick Richards. He just couldn't get as high <laughs> as Nick Richards. Beautiful pass. And see him, he looked away, too. He was looking to the corner like he was going to swing. Uh, a swing pass for three and threw it to Richards. B.J. Holmes knew it was coming, but he goes 6'4". Nick Richards goes 6'11". Advantage Kentucky. Yeah. Couldn't have done anything, even if he wanted to. Steps. Happy feet for T.J. Atwood. Lamar is starting to come apart at the seams here. And again, their best weapon on the bench with the two fouls in the form of Davion Buster. And really, again, what ignited it is when you see that Lamar defense, that zone defense, Maxi comes in, knocks down a couple of threes, and opens the whole thing up. Maxi feeling it. Maxi hits it. 18-0 run, sparked in large part by the freshman. Lamar out of sorts and a lot of contact down low. That'll go against Juzang of Kentucky. But what a stanza for the freshman from Garland, Texas, Tyrese Maxey. Four out of five from a three-point line. Emmanuel quickly knows exactly where to go with it. Tyrese Maxey ready to shoot. Lock and load. Time now for the mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate. A flurry of threes for Big Blue. There's no doubt it's, it's got getting it to guys where they're most comfortable. Nick Richards controlling the paint, playing above the rim. Great pen, penetration and pitch out to an open shooter. Hagen's ready to shoot. And basically, Lamar's defense right now is spinning. They don't know which way, but that's what's so dangerous about this Kentucky team. The athleticism to take it to the hole and dominate in the paint, and also now they're shooting the ball from outside the three-point line. Uh, they didn't shoot the three well against Evansville. They didn't shoot it against Utah, Utah Valley particularly well, but you see the last two games, marked improvement. Mount St. Mary's 40%, and tonight already seven threes, including four by the freshman Maxey. Maxey's got 12 of Kentucky's 18 points during this 18-0 run. And you saw one come on transition. You saw one where he had to shoot it. Actually, be so far behind where Lamar's defense was, that, that zone half-court defense, blocked by Maxey. And a shot clock violation. What more can Tyrese Maxey do in the last five minutes? Now, now you can see why Coach Cal was so excited about the defensive ability because they're versatile. They have multiple guys that can guard multiple positions, athletic enough, strong enough. And check by Holmes. They haven't had many fouls. It's only the fourth on Lamar in this first half. But, and that's something that we've been accustomed to with Kentucky is getting to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. And it hadn't been anything that, that they aren't willing to do. It's just they've had open threes, and they've made them. And Kentucky's only shot two free throws, and they lead the league in free throw percentage at 80%. That's top 10 of the nation. High percentage shot. Open dunks. Oh, Whitney had it rejected. Montgomery follow no. Tapped around, scooped up by Lamar. Two point blank shots right there. I'll be thinking about that for a while. But again, I like the aggressiveness from an offensive rebounding standpoint. EJ Montgomery, Sestina, Richards, Whitney, all these guys can get themselves extra shots just by hitting the glass. Pass to Jefferson. Shot clock under 10. J. 
Jefferson on a blow by. That's it short. Every time Lamar goes to the goal, they can hear footsteps from some of Kentucky's bigs. Montgomery, that's the kind of shot he needs to get going. E.J. Montgomery in that stretch four mold. And a young man who is trying to get his way back in terms of healthy and confident. And that's why these games are so important. You saw how he just caught it in rhythm. And, and that's what he does in practice. You play more of these games, and you're going to take what you practice into these games. From a defensive standpoint, you want to talk about how alert they are, how aware they are. You had two guys going up for a block, three guys right there to get the rebound and run. And that, that this Kentucky team, as, as we've seen, they can also run. They can, they're going to be able to get up and down the floor this, this year because of what they do from a defensive standpoint. Tomorrow at a special time at 9 Eastern time, we'll bring you Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron and talk about the hottest topics for the coming week. That's right here on the SEC Network. Alongside Pat Brennan, Mike Wilkin, great to be with you here. What a great crowd at Rupp Arena. Kentucky trying to improve to 5-1 and one on the season and not taking anything for granted. There's one good thing Coach Cal talked about that Evansville game. He said, you know, that reminded everybody, we're not number one. He said, I've coached number one team. We are not a number one team. We still have to work. We still have a lot to work on and improve. And since then, I think Kentucky's answered the bell pretty well. Kentucky's offense a little out of sorts there, and sometimes a bad offensive possession will lead to a bad defensive possession, and you saw the durable penetration right there leads to a layup. Sohail with a nice drive. They cut to 18 in the 90 seconds remaining first half. Around the screen, kick out to Juzang. Up and under move, Juzang gets it to go. Johnny Juzang, the freshman out of Los Angeles. One thing you see a lot from young players, and I'm talking freshmen that come from high school to college, it's they think a lot. They think too much sometimes, and you can see the hesitation. Should I shoot this? Should I put it on the floor? You saw that with Juzang there. Fortunately, enough creativity to get it done. Maxie's not thinking. He just fired that one right up in rhythm and nearly got it to drop. But you can't. You, you have to take advantage of when you do have a nice catch and shoot opportunity. Juzang is obviously that kind of a player. And they're going to need him to do that coming off the bench. Air offensive rebound for Lamar. Edward. In and out. Shot clock off. Kentucky will play for the final shot. And take the use it or lose it timeout with 16 seconds remaining. Been a very good first half for the Wildcats, shooting 50% from the field and 47% from downtown and up by 20. Marty and McGee Wednesday at 7 Eastern time, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Nobody talks about Southern culture and football better than these guys. Well, nobody's more exciting to watch, perhaps, in Kentucky when they've got it all going. And so far in this first half, Pat, they have. Yeah, and they've shown us a variety of things, glimpses of what we know this team could be. First of all, from a defensive standpoint, a lot was talked about defending the pick and roll. Coach Cal told us that he's just teaching the basics of how to defend this pick and roll. You saw early on in the game, Kentucky did a fantastic job of flattening out, not allowing dribble penetration. What does that lead to? It leads to quick shots, hurried shots, rush shots. Now Kentucky gets on the defensive glass and boom, they're off to the races. We've seen dunks, we've seen uh, trail threes. So you've seen a lot of what we know Kentucky could be this year. Well, Cal was great today at shoot around one day. I love what he said, he said, you know guys, I forgot how much I don't like this time of year, how difficult it is, because I remember the end of every season where all my guys 
the light turns on and it's a lot easier for me to do what I want to do. But this time of year, there's always growing pains for Kentucky and Coach Cal. There's no doubt. I mean, even you know, Lamar throwing a 2-2-1 press in his own defense. You have to do a lot of teaching to understand that. Montgomery wanted that one badly. It was out of bounds with point one. Yes. The, the smoke went off and you know, might have heard a horn, but there's still point one on the clock, and that's all that matters. Well, premature in that smoke. <laughs> That's never something you want to have happen. That's exactly right. E.J. Montgomery there with a good look. Not enough time for a catch and shoot. Half comes to an end. Kentucky with a good half. A 20-point lead hitting seven threes. Wildcats on a 22-2 run to end it as we welcome you to the halftime festivities. Little Sunday evening basketball here in the Commonwealth, Kentucky, leading Lamar 41 to 21. We welcome you back, Mike Morgan, alongside Pat Bradley. Pat, the offense outstanding at half number one, but very often it's the defense that sets up the offense, and Kentucky's defense was suffocating in those first 20 minutes. Uh, they can be elite defensively. They're very versatile. They get multiple guys that can defend multiple positions and then get up above the rim to protect the paint. Beautiful job there, E.J. Montgomery, and Sestina comes over for the help, and Nick Richards is there to clean anything up if there is penetration to the hole. And then you see Kentucky off to the races. Keon Brooks, six Takes blocks, advantage. three steals, and not nearly as many breakdowns mm. for Kentucky ah. on defense. Defended screens well, defended one-on-one -on -one well overall. Kentucky's defense rising to the challenge. Yeah, Mike, I can really think of maybe one or two times where they went and trapped three guys on the ball, and then it was a, it was a slow rotation. Uh, Lamar wasn't able to take advantage of it. Uh, and, and that, now we're getting into a situation where second half, you're up 20. It, it looks like things are clicking. But these games are extremely important for Brooks for Juzang to get in their rhythm. Even E.J. Montgomery and some of the other guys that are coming back from the injury to get back to where they were. Richards sends that one return to sender. The luxury, I was thinking about this today at shoot around as you see Nick Richards, great timing, great extension. The only thing he could have done other than with that block, I guess, is keep it in play and then the, off to the races again. But the luxury coach Cal of having Nick Richards for a couple of years. I mean, the anchor of that defense and, and being really to bring him along like he has. Uh, that's, you know, Coach Cal doesn't have that very often. A guy in the program for a couple of years, especially as key for defense as Nick Richards is. And then you've got three valuable sophomores. When you talk about Hagens and Quickly and Montgomery, so they have some guys who have been there before just playing expanded roles like this guy, Ashton Hagens. He's shooting it with so much calm. Did you see that? Just very calm catch and shoot. Wasn't in a hurry, but was ready to shoot it on the catch. Ten points for Hagens. Eight threes in the game for Kentucky. And a jump ball, the arrow. Will favor Lamar. What do we always say, Mike? Sharing is caring. Great attack. And you see, you have to help when Tyrese Maxey comes in there. Defender goes to try to close the lane. Ashton Hagen's right there, feet ready, hands ready. He's got a big target. That's part of it too, man. Everybody likes to receive the ball maybe a little bit different spot, right? You've got to let your teammate know where you want the ball to be ready to catch and shoot. All these little things lead up to a made jump shot. But it starts with a pass that's on time, on target, kind of like Tom Brady. <laughs> Always have a way of working in Tom Brady on a broadcast. Mid-range jumper is good for Avery Sullivan. Lamar trying to stop the bleeding, a run that carried over from the end of the first half into the second. Kentucky's been in control of this game for much of the way. It's a big reason why. Maxi, kick out pass. Whitney, probing the baseline and had it knocked away. Quick hands by Atwood. Good job stopping the ball there by Ashton Higgins, but you'd expect he'd know to do that. Out of bounds to Lamar. 
you talked about the creativity that we will have to start seeing from Lamar's players to try to get try to get any shot up over Nick Richards. Well, again, there, there's no reason why this Kentucky team can't be elite defensively, That's not right. just good. You know, we haven't seen a whole lot of that so far. A lot of guys still learning where they're supposed to be, as Cal was telling us today. They still are forced to think, and I'm still forced to teach. Eventually, a lot of this will come second nature. Blocks come second nature to Richards and Maxey. He's second nature when he's driving to the hole full speed. Kick out pass on the other end. Three off the mark, rebound Hagens. Right, one of the other things too is when there is a defensive breakdown by Kentucky, bad communication, poor rotation, you get Nick Richards that can clean anything up and catch it on the other end. Maxi on an alley-oop pass. Another assisted basket for Kentucky. They've got a remarkable streak going on going back to the last game. Seems like every bucket they have is coming off an assist. How about our guy, Tyrese Maxey, finding the open lane, feeding his big fella who just got done on the other end, starting a fast break. Bradley with you here at Rupp Arena. This was from Coach Cal just a few days ago, talking about what he is trying to figure out, what this team needs to figure out, how to be a threat offensively. Well, so far, Pat, so good. They've been a very big threat. They've made more threes. There you go. Unofficially, we've got them down for 10 threes. Five spaced players. Spacing has been good tonight. And how do we get more consistent in playing winning basketball? I, I, I'd say those are four check marks. There's no question the four check marks are there to be a threat offensively, though. One thing a lot of players do, and you still see it, when they catch, they don't even look at the rim. To be a threat, you have to be ready every time immediately. I can dribble this, I can shoot this, I can pass this. You gotta be in that attack mode. The triple threat, right? We used to call that the triple threat. I don't hear that very often, right? Did we take that out of the vocab basketball? I, I hope not. I still love that term. Okay, so you got to you got to catch it in threat. Uh, Buster just did that. Yeah, it, that's it. See, he's ready. Every time this kid touches the ball, he is ready to attack you. Now, that's part of being a threat offensively. And then everything else, the pressure that Kentucky can put on the defense because of the talent that they have is really second to none. Buster with 12 now, by the way. Kentucky officially 8 of 17 from 3. Whitney rejecting that one. Beautiful pass. Maxi saves it. Over to Hagens and to Richards. How about that? Okay, I know it wasn't <laughs> on target, but it was on time. Yep. And what you want to encourage is your guards, your whole entire team, to make that pass. Too many guys are afraid to even make that pass. Whitney fouled on the giddy up. That, that's the encouragement that you want. Coach Cal guarantee I, he loves that pass. See? Doesn't he look happy? Kentucky up 48-26, and for all you youngsters out there, check out Davion Buster. If you want to know why this young man is able to get off 10 threes per game, he never stops moving. The marathon man. He's coming off multiple screens. You see him catch it there, get it back to his teammates, and they use him all over the floor. Now he's on the completely other side. He keeps moving. It's not easy for a defense, a defender, or anyone to stay with the guy that is committed to continually move around the floor. You know, when I think of guys that did that better than anybody, I think one name comes to mind, and that's Reggie Miller. And Reggie oh, Miller never stopped. never stopped, perpetual motion. And if you were going to guard him on any given night, you were going to have to run your butt off. And chances are, at some point, he was going to find an open spot. Hey, you found a few open spots that's on this it. floor back in the day. 26 points at Rupp Arena. That's right. That's right. Took him to overtime. I'll it out there if nobody else will. That was that 98 national championship team with Wayne Turner, the burner. Nazi Muhammad. Yeah. That was team coached Jeff by Shepard. Tubby Smith. That's right. That's right. But it, it's about continuous movement. Nobody. And this is, it just makes perfect sense. First of all, if you're a defender, the last guy you want to defend is somebody who is constantly moving, coming off of the screen. I mean, it's easy to defend somebody that doesn't move. It's like it... it Almost an and one. Nice that was take. It. Good job by Hagen. So if you notice, the, the right side, there was a driving lane, and a lot of that was what Coach Farby told his guys today when he was talking about the scout. Don't leave 13. Can't leave 13. 
Even if you feel tempted, even if somebody's driving right by you, you want to help your guy, you just cannot leave him. Ashton Hagens was able to show right there um, what, what, what Coach Barbia taught him this morning. On Friday, we've got a men's hoops doubleheader for you. Kentucky UAB here at Rupp at 7, and then the Gators taking on Marshall. That'll be in Gainesville. The Gators with a big one tonight against Xavier. It's a big one for Florida, big one for the SEC. And an empty trip at the free throw line. 23-point cushion for Kentucky. We saw that early on in the second half, and certainly this possession, Kentucky looking to post up Nick Richards to try to get him some touches. Uh, hot potato finally <laughs> reeled in by Lamar. Nobody wanted the pumpkin. That's the most important thing. Come on, it, it definitely is a factor. Lamar just struggling to find good looks now. If it's not Buster, nobody else really seems to get any open looks. And that time Hagen saw the pass going to Buster. He read it all the way. Great individual <laughs> defense by Kentucky there and great rotation. But that's it. When you're connected, like they look connected defensively, you trust one another. You trust that, guess what? I know he's going to be able to contain the ball handler, so I don't have to get out of position. Because if I do, my man's going to be open for a shot. I love that word, connected. You hear Seth Greenberg use that a lot. I think the times when Kentucky was not playing well earlier this year, it looked like a lot of great individual players who weren't necessarily connected. Sure. That comes with time. It's not a selfish group. Cal loves the, the attitude of his young men on this team. That's not an issue. Well, part of it, Mike, too, is everybody, we, we talk so much about chemistry on offense. Mm -hmm. There is a chemistry on defense because you have got to understand how the other four guys, their strengths and weaknesses defensively. So, so like, for instance, when I was playing, Everybody knew if I had a guard a guy one-on-one -on -one with the ball, help. You, you better be ready to help, and that's fine. But they also knew that I was great at rotation. So there's a, there is an understanding of your guys, how to help and where to help and when to help. Pretty good help defense there. Little bailout whistle. Otherwise, good defense by three Kentucky defenders, including Nick Richards. And, and part of that, too, is there are some guys who their tendency is to leave their man, they don't have the ball, right. to try to get in a passing lane for a steal, or you, you saw, I believe it was quickly coming on the backside there. So there are certain things you just don't know until you play with a guy over and over again. John Calipari in his 11th year with Kentucky, four Final Fours, national championship in 2012. You think of all the draft picks, he's had seven point guards drafted in the first mm. round while at Kentucky, and Ashton Hagens will likely be number eight at the end of this year. And I'll give you another example, Nick Richards. You know he's going to block a bunch of shots, okay? But he does have a tendency to come over, leave his man to block some shots. So what's going to happen now is if, if you're on the weak side, you understand that you have to get over and say, okay, I know my big fellow is going to go up and get this. I got to make sure to step in, get his man, block his man out, or be ready to bring in that block shot. Sestina back in the game. Ooh. Sets up a three. Quickly can't connect. And a rebound off to Lamar. 49-28 our score. Rejection by Montgomery who says, come on, that's too easy. <laughs> Cannot hesitate. Corey Nickerson just hoping that that one somehow would get out of the reach of Montgomery, but no chance. Yeah, well, the second he didn't go directly up with that, I knew it was going to be problems. Offensive rebound, a nice one by Sullivan. Sets up an open three, knocked down by Sohail. Those offensive second rebound, second chance opportunities. Those get you. Kentucky coming into this game third in the SEC in rebound margin. At about plus 10 a game. It's a good number. Cal thinks it could be a little bit better at this point. Foul on the floor. <laughs> 
against Lamar. Well, don't you love those guards, Hagens, Quickly, Maxie? They, they're so strong. What I committed when I think of Kentucky in March as compared to now, and I think of those three guards. This is a tough team to guard now, mm. but when those guys are truly connected, everything is flowing. It's scary how good they'll be. And we know March is about guard play. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants bigs, but if you've got three guards that can play the way they can, that's why I think there's still a lot to love about Kentucky is Maxie. A lot to love about his game. My goodness, Maxie the freshman with 16. Right on cue. And you talk about those three guys. Part of is, there's the slinger right there, number 13. Davion Buster going back to Maxie. Quickly, Hagens, what you love about them is they're strong, they can get in the paint, they get to the free throw line, Mike. Maxi and Hagens, it, going into this game, both had 25 free throw attempts on the season. Montgomery, the hoop and the harm on a beautiful feed from Quickly. I'd love to see him get going, Duzang get going. Great penetration again, so many good things happen when you penetrate. Now, E.J. Montgomery ready to receive the ball, doesn't hesitate, very comfortable in there. Used the, use the offhand, too. Last year, as a freshman, only averaged four points, four rebounds a game. His best game came against South Carolina, double-double with 11 and 13. They need him to have a few double-doubles in conference play this year. Can't be all the guards. No, it, it, and he's somebody that's versatile. He can shoot the three. We've seen that. I know. Statistically, not where he would like it, but he, he can, he's a threat from out there. Good looking shot by Avery Sullivan. Lamar from the Southland Conference. Remember when that long ago that Stephen F. Austin was dominating that league? Right. Of course, Brad Underwood left, and last year it was Sam Houston State who represented the league in the NCAA tournament. You're saying on a three. I'm telling you, he's got great form and he's a good looking <laughs> shooter. It's just not going down in the games yet. This place is going to erupt when he when he does knock yep. him down. Uh, it's a great, great pass though by EJ Montgomery. Nice shot with a little contact by Sohail. Fearless. Making the most of his opportunity. Lamar making a little bit of noise. Quickly, too easy. Well, when you got Maxi coming downhill at you, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and then he hands it off to his teammate Hagens that comes straight down again right at the defense. Pass, timeout on the floor, Kentucky up by 16. Now Nick Richards flirting with another double-double. He's been very active defensively, a block here. He's had a couple of those. He's had four field goals, all of them slam dunks, but it's, it's going to be more than slam dunks for Nick Richards if he has his way. He's actually been working on his game, Pat Bradley. Try to show a little bit of a sky hook, little feathery touch down low. That's it. Improve his game. Nice little touch. Catch, go straight up with it. No hesitation. Got to go to the left. A little left. Everything we do with our right, we do, we, with, the left. We do with our left. Yep. Learn that one early on. Uh, basketball career, good catch. He's working on his footwork there as well. Kind of a lost start at times, the hook shot. But big guys that can do it and do it well, it's easy buckets <laughs> if you can perfect that shot. Nick Richards already eight rebounds, excuse me, eight points, nine rebounds, four blocks in this game. And, and you could see early on in the second half and, and a few times here in their sets that they are making a concerted effort to get him a touch on the block. And I think that's a great idea. You, you, you need, you're going to have to have that as an option. And the more you can feed him, the more he's comfortable with it, the more you can play through him, and that just gives you another option. Gives Cal another option to draw something up, coming out of a timeout when you need a crucial bucket. And with a guy like Nick Richards, he's a big that's shooting his free throws well. 
So you don't care any time in the game, but you get it to the big fellow because he gets fouled. We, we trust he's going to get up there and knock him down. Yeah, he's not shot a free throw in this game, but overall this year shooting 84% from the free throw. That's a good number for a big. Come on, that's a good number for anybody. Curl quickly finds Brooks on a three. Richards flying in for the rebound. Shot clock resets to 20, the new rule in college basketball, no longer 30. 20 on an offensive rebound. That's it, immediately gets that offensive rebound, keeps his head up, the ball up, looks to see who's open. Brooks, one-on-one -on -one move there. Over two on that trip. For Keon Brooks. Kentucky up by 16. Talk about signature shots. That was a little fade away from the corner. And that's an unstoppable shot if you can get it to go down. Maxi called for the reach. Oh, talk about signature shots in the game of basketball. Kareem, oh. of course. Nobody stopped the sky hook, Pat Bradley. No. Well, Kareem did it. He shot it from like 17 feet. Oh, yeah. Dirk with the fade away. Good luck trying to stop that. Style points for George Gervin. And the finger roll, the Iceman, and of course, Rick Barry still trying to tell people, hey, the underhanded free throw is never going to go out of style. Remember we had Canyon Barry. That's right. Canyon Barry, his son in the SEC a few years ago playing for Florida, and he brought back the underhanded free throw. The old underhanded free throw. I think that's the last college player I've seen shoot it. Pretty much laughter of his teammates. He was committed. Well, how about Kentucky fans remember their signature move? Good hands it. Jamal Mashburn with the monster mash. One heck of a player. The <laughs> one of the biggest reasons why this program was resurrected under Rick Pitino when he landed on Jamal Mashburn. Under 10 minutes to play. Quickly. Turns and fires and draws the foul. Emmanuel quickly will go to the free throw line for a pair. Another good free throw shooter is quickly. And Lester just picked up his third foul. And you, you look at Kentucky's free throw numbers, and, and the reason why they're shooting the ball so well from the free throw line, a lot of it is the, the, the right guys are getting to the free throw line. And we'll go back to the strength that Coach Cal has in his three guards. They all shoot the ball really well from the three-point lines. I mean, excuse me, from the free throw line. And you talked about March, when you're playing big games, tough games, the ball is going to be in their hands. At the end of the game, free throws, layups, dunks, yep. high percentage shots are going to win those games. Very underrated facet, and Kentucky is poised to be a good free throw shooting team all year long. I know some stats, some numbers this time of year is so early. Sure. You take them with a grain of salt. There's no reason to believe Kentucky is not going to be a very good free throw shooting team throughout this season. Uh, offensive foul called on Hagens. And John Calipari irate at that call from Anthony Jordan. He's going to pop a button. Take it easy, coach. I guess this is worth another look. That's a tough one because, yes, his arm was up, but I didn't see an extension on it. Right. So I would say it's just sort of him protecting his space. We do have, you know, this in college basketball now, you can actually get a technical foul for flopping. That's right. Yes, you can. I was talking to uh, Anthony Jordan a couple of games ago, one of the officials. They actually whistled a player on that a couple weeks ago. Trying to get rid of that, just as the NBA is trying to get rid of it. College games trying to get rid of it. It's one thing to sell a call. It's another thing to flat out <laughs> fake a call. So it's always risky to flop anyway, in my estimation, because if, you, if it doesn't work, you're putting your defense at a, a, a one-man disadvantage, and you're taking yourself out of the play. So that was always the hesitation for me, even thinking about doing something like that. You're not that good of an actor. No, I'm not. I mean, <laughs> you can see right through me. I mean, you're too transparent. I just <laughs> can't see you pulling that off. No offense. But Al Pacino, you're not. Well, and I would have had to try to take a charge. I didn't want to get involved yeah, in all that. Sure. 
again. Help. Help Pat Bradley on D. Rotate. All taken care of. Yeah, help me, help me out. Listen, I'm not, I'm not afraid to ask for any help. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever as Montgomery drains the free throw. Tomorrow at a special time of 9 Eastern. It's Thinking Out Loud presented by Regions Bank. Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears will break down the weekend on the gridiron right here on the SEC Network. for the freshman Tyrese Maxey. I think we could all see that one coming. Yep. The deny on the wings, it was just a matter of time. The wrong guy had the ball for Lamar out top. It was just a matter of time. It was going to be a slow bounce pass for a steal. Hagens, stolen away, tried to hit quickly diagonally. And Lamar with a bucket on the other end. It's Sullivan. That was just a great read defensively by Buster. Took a chance and it paid off for him. Quickly off the screen. Lines up a three and knocks it down. Perfectly executed play by Kentucky and quickly with nothing but nylon. What was impressive there was the patience. This quickly had come off that screen one time, went all the way through underneath and came back off of it off a of Nick Richards screen for him. Perfect catch and shoot. IQ Emmanuel quickly comes off that nice Nick Richards screen. Pass on time on. Solid performance all around for Kentucky tonight, 63 to 43. Our score with 6:52 to go. A season high, nine threes so far for the Wildcats. SEC team shooting at 33 percent or better thus far. Last year, you had 10 of the 14. This year, again, it's early, but you've got five. And of course, we haven't talked about the fact that you got a new three-point line that's about sure. 15 inches deeper than the old one. So you'd expect the overall national numbers to drop a bit. So far, they've dropped about two and a half percent. But this Kentucky team, you have to think that they could shoot them at a higher percentage with the guys they have. Yeah, there's no doubt they can. And a lot of it's personnel, clearly. But what you can do with Kentucky is you have multiple guys that can get in the lane. Dribble penetration, there was one right there. So now you're going to be able to suck the defense in, kick it out for a three, an open three. And a lot of these guys with their confidence, catch, shoot, be ready, feet ready, get a big target up so your teammate knows where to pass it. Maxie just fouled a three-point shooter, which is a no-no. That's no his no. third. Cardinalson right there. I'm going to say Cal didn't think that was a proper call. I had to hit the hand and the fall through. I think so, yeah. Clearly got the ball, obviously, but then the fall through, got the fingertip. As a shooter, you, you got to get that call, right? I never got that call. You never but, got that call? But no, are you kidding me? They, no play respect. on, play on. Oh, it was back in the day, man. Back in the day. Play on. <laughs> yeah. One for two thus far is Buster. He'll get a third one right here. Sophomore out of Austin, Texas, averaging over 15 points a game. A lot of fun to watch. Fun player. 16 I, points tonight. Although I did foul. Uh, just one and only time I, I fouled somebody shooting a three my Maybe. freshman year against Auburn. He made it. Uh, I came immediately out of the game. You think I ever did that again? No. <laughs> Montgomery just threw it up there and got it to go. There's some contact on a screen all the way in the backcourt. And that's Ellis Jefferson. He took the worst of it. He ran into a brick wall, and I don't know if he ever saw it coming. He's going to go gingerly over to the bench. Also checking at number 15, TJ Eckley. It's in the top of your screen here. 
was just a flat screen set by Montgomery, and yeah, <laughs> Jefferson never saw it coming. That's one of those where you're like, hey man, wh where's my teammate calling that <laughs> screen out? What are you doing way up, up the floor? You gotta let me know that's coming. 20 point game. Seven minutes to go here at Rupp Arena. Wildcats have controlled it really from the opening tip. And the trees. Another offensive rebound and another miss and another get and another shot and another miss. <laughs> I see a pattern developing here, Pat Bradley. And in all that, I think Nick Richards actually got a piece of the first shot. And after all that, they're going to say Kentucky basketball. You know, defensive possession isn't over until you get the ball. Five blocks officially now for Nick Richards. Richards is two points away from a double-double to go along with five blocks. Not a bad night at the office for the junior. Baseline drive, Maxi, oh, a little behind the back pass. He's looking for some style points there. And then a foul on the other end. I don't know if John Calipari is going to be in love with that decision. And he's letting his freshman know about it. It's going to be a short conversation. Yeah. Or, or really one where I, Maxi understands there's really not much I could say. Ah, uh, you got my arm, coach. I had, I had to make an around the back bounce pass in the lane. <laughs> he hit my arm. You know what, Coach Cal? I think he's going to have a little bit of fun with that at practice. Trying to get his point across. <laughs> make the easy pass. Brooks, not bashful. Knocks it down. Mid range game for Keon Brooks. And that also becomes an option for this Kentucky team. And a bucket underneath. Avery Sullivan, good looking player. I imagine he'll have. Great amount of success this year in the Southland Conference. Wide body at 6'8", 220. Get around the basket. Timeout called by Quickly. He's saying, you got to come and help me, man. I'm stuck out here. So, you know, when you're up most of the game by double digits, sometimes you want to have a little bit of too much fun. Here's Maxie behind the back <laughs> on the baseline at the knees of Richards. Yeah, that's... That's not going to pass the smell test with your head coach. Oh, again, you know, it might have, that, that pass could have worked if Nick Richards caught with his knees. Uh huh. Right? That's one thing. Yeah. The second thing is uh, that pass was about a 100 mile an hour <laughs> fastball behind his back. Very athletic. Mike, give him credit to have the athleticism to even attempt that. You and I, you'd be at the chiropractor's for about a week after you try to perform something like that. I'm gonna go there just, just after looking at it. I know that much. <laughs> One of the few things Maxi has not done well tonight, 18 points on seven of 10 shooting, five rebounds, three assists. The defense is strong. A guy who's wired to score, and a guy that you can only imagine what the ceiling is. I mean, we got a, a sneak peek of it early in the opener against Michigan State. He put on a show at the Garden. I can't wait to see him in 18 conference games in the SEC. He is going to be one of the most exciting players to watch. Keon Brooks, whose father, Keon Sr., played basketball at Wright State. How about the numbers on Pops? Back in 99 during his senior year at Wright State, 20 points a game, five and a half rebounds, four steals, excuse me, four assists and two steals a game. That's what dad did in his senior year at Wright State. Yeah, he's getting it done. And Keon was a part of Lumiere High School. They were 30 and one at one point last season, ranked number one of the nation. So he knows a thing or two about winning basketball. He's getting some good minutes in this game. See, 
Coach Cal have him come off some screens, catch it in that mid-range area, which we know he can shoot it from the three. We know he can put it on the floor. Nine points for Keon Brooks, the freshman. Sistina back in the game for Kentucky. And, and he's an interesting Brooks is because at his size, he's got versatility, so Cal can play him multiple ways. Mm -hmm. When you talk about on the wing, uh, a big guard, in the paint. Now telling us he will play some four this year. He's really built more like a small four, kind of wiry. Strong take, plus the foul. Tyrese Maxey, 20 points, and looking for 21 here. Attack, attack, attack. What I love about it, and we talked about being a threat offensively, catches it, direct attack, no hesitation, straight to the rim, straight to the paint, puts the pressure on Busta right there, make a decision. You can see me gave a little, showed the ball, a little bit, little ball fake that he's gonna kick it out to Hagens just to create an easier scoring opportunity, open up that lane a little bit for him. Son of a basketball coach in the state of Texas, Father Tyrone. He played some college ball as well at Washington State. Remember his coach was there? Kelvin Sampson. How about that? Kelvin Sampson. Heck of a coach. Good take. Uh, that's going to be basket interference. Count the bucket. It was off the rim. That's that pick and roll defense that we've talked a lot about today going back to the last few games coach Cal has, has worked on that in practice to get his guys to understand because as he puts it he's teaching a lot of these guys defensively how to defend a pick and roll what he for the first time and so he's got to take it from square one and build on that and if he, he says if he skips any steps guess what right come March come April that could be a crucial mistake That'll cost this team a goal where they want to, and that's a national championship. And sometimes you have to take some lumps in the short term for the better gain long term. So he's not going to take the shortcuts. Maybe that means playing a game closer against the mid-major than the fans would want. Maybe it means losing a game that you wouldn't ordinarily lose. But for the long term, it's what you have to do to get better as a team prepared for March. And, and listen, Coach Cal brought it up to us. He said fans may not like to see games against mid-majors at home, but they are so crucial for the development of this team. Now you can't play a top 25 opponent can't every game and expect young players to learn how to get better and gain confidence. Now, from a player standpoint, yeah, you want to play top five teams every single night. But you can't start listening to the players. Trust me. Final media timeout with 3.23 to go. Kentucky, 74. Lamar, 53. Tyrese Maxey leading all scorers with 21 points. Go along with five rebounds and three assists. Some of his passes have been memorable. We had one bad one here. This is one that will not be making the rounds anytime soon again <laughs> if it's up to Coach Cal and company. But then, when you clean it up, make the shirt pass to the big man. That's a deuce, that's a dime, and that makes everybody happy, including Coach Cal. Get a little, little medium five there. Yeah. Right? When the low, too low, make him happy. Anytime you make a head coach happy, then that's a good thing. Uh, I tell you what, Look, he's having a blast. The, the thing that he's most happy about, he's watching this team now looking a lot more connected on offense and shooting the ball much better. Again, 9 of 20 from 3 tonight. Several players have gotten in on the fun from outside. Of course, you already know these guys can take you off the dribble when you talk about those three talented guards. Shot clock down to 3. Hagen's going to launch. Why not? There's 3-pointer. Number 10 on the night for Kentucky, and Hagens has 15. But you're right about that. At end of clock situations, all five guys have to understand, what are we trying to get done here? Nick Richards, great timing, came out exactly when Hagens needed him. The spacing was there. Result, open shot. Hand up, hand up. Oh. 
Brooks with a weak side rebound. Maxi flowing in the front court. Bullet pass to Richards. And has it knocked out of bounds. Richards, I wonder if he knows he needs two points for a double-double. <laughs> These guys now, they know their stats more than ever. Well, they got them right up there on the scoreboard. That's true. <laughs> Maxi right there did, did a great job of pointing exactly where he wanted Nick Richards to get on the block before he even got past half court. Richards draws the double, sets up Sistine on a three. Richards with the rebound, and no, it rims out. That would have been the double-double. <laughs> Around and knockdown for Nick Richards. Oh my goodness, Brooks just took air out of the basketball. <laughs> and then a foul on the shot by Sullivan. This looked like that was blocked twice. They are so long. Quick twitch. But going back to the other end, the, the, the luxury of now having Nick Richards get on the post, be a threat there, passing out of the post, because he had Tyrese Maxey in the corner mm -hmm. when that double triple team really essentially Justina's guy left, Maxey's guy left. Uh, but Richards did a good job, maintained his pose, it, it, it is getting it either way, decided. Get Nate Sestina a shot here. Good night for Avery Sullivan. 11 points, 12 rebounds. When you put up a double double at Rupp Arena, you play for a mid major, you're, you're keeping the box score the next day. That's for sure. Yeah. And wrestling with Nick Richards the whole night, that is not easy. That's making the scrapbook. Inside, Richards, and there is the double-double. Easiest two he's going to get all yeah. year. But that was great execution. We talked about how well they ran their offense tonight. Great pass, great screen, open dunk. Quickly fouled on the three. Right there, great ball movement. Nick, uh, Nate Sestina knows exactly where to go with it. And you saw the back screen by Quickly to get Nick Richards open right underneath the hoop. Everybody was doing their job. That's what you love to see. Everybody doing their job to get an open dunk. Manuel Quickly, among his many talents, can play the saxophone and the drums. Whoa, what do you play? Triangle, uh -huh. right? You play a mean triangle, I hear. No, that, that, you know, I tried, tried my hand at the bongos. Harmonica, I mean, I tried, tried it all. Tried it all. Harmonica. You? I did take piano in college. You took a piano class at Arkansas? I took a piano class. Uh, see, I, at Arkansas. Five years working together, the things I learned, I, I never knew. This guy actually tried These to play hands. the piano. These hands. Wow. <laughs> I would love to get a tape of that. Oh, and to hear the most massacred piano <laughs> play that's ever been performed. For at least, that was my goal at one point. Coming up on a minute left. Buster throws it high off the bank and in. 19 points for that young man. He has a disappointed tonight. Was it was either piano or ballroom dancing? I mean, come on. Oh, you made the right call. I've exactly. seen your football. You could sit down. <laughs> yeah, right, and I didn't have to. Embarrass myself. Richards. Show he's got some mid-range game. Buster, never bashful. And a foul against Lamar. So the final 40 seconds will tick off here soon enough. And Kentucky's going to improve to 5-1. We'll have a few days off before taking on UAB on Friday night. Don't forget Marty and McGee. Wednesdays at 7 Eastern right here on the SEC Network. Richards at the line for two. Richards back to the free throw line. Might be a little bit tired on that stroke. And backups are coming in for Kentucky. Coach Calipari has been able to get nine guys really good minutes. On a night like tonight, that's what you want. Good work defensively, good work offensively. A lot of great things come from this game. That right there, that's Ben Jordan. 
And Ben Jordan is a pitcher on the baseball team, very highly touted prospect. And decided to walk on with the basketball team. So Ben Jordan hoping to add a little bit of depth. He's every bit of 6'9 out of Olive Kentucky. Can you imagine? He said he's a pitcher. Yeah. On the mound. 6'9 coming down after the yeah. heat. He must throw. Oh. Uh, he's not going to get in unless we get a whistle, though. Fans want to see him come in the game. Shoot it! <laughs> they also want to see Welch fire up a three. And I think Lamar is just content to let Kentucky dribble it out. And that's how this game is going to come to an end. Very solid performance by Big Blue. 10 of 22 from three. They shot 46% from downtown, 51 from the field. Rebounded it well, shot it well, cleaned up some things defensively, Pat Bradley. Not a lot to complain about if you're John Calipari. Well, they started it from the defensive end. That created some easy scoring opportunities up and down the floor. Then you saw guys, when Lamar did go to their half-court zone, you saw guys shoot the ball with confidence. I'm talking about the passes were on time, on target. Guys were ready to shoot, catch and shoot. Feet were ready, hands were ready. That resulted and a lot of made three-point shots for Kentucky, which we knew they were going to be able to do at some point this season. We'll put a bow on this one when we come back. Again, 81-56, the final score, Kentucky, a winner over Lamar. Convincing victory for the Wildcats tonight, 81-56, your final score here from Rupp Arena. Kentucky is now 5-1 and one on the season. Mike Morgan, Pat Bradley, and the guy in the middle is a freshman who continues to make a name for himself, Tyrese Maxey with a game-high 21 points. Tyrese, you were aggressive early on with your shot, continue to feel confident. Do you feel like your confidence is improving game by game? It is. I feel like I'm getting a lot more comfortable, uh, getting adjusted to the college speed, and uh, Coach Cal is doing a really good job of just helping me stay humble and, and just get better every day. Is the game slowing down for you at all? We're now, Cal always talks about the freshmen have to think too much. Are you thinking less and less and just playing the game? Uh, yes, sir. He just been telling me, just like you said, slow down. And uh, I feel like the game just really coming to me. Like, I feel like I'm doing a really good job getting my teammates involved and uh, just letting it come to me. You had an interesting exchange with Coach when you tried the very creative behind the back bounce pass to Nick Richards about two feet away. So what was that teaching moment like, Coach Cal? What do you have to say? He said, uh, yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. <laughs> it's a turnover, though. It's but but uh, yeah, I, that, was, that was a bad play. Right, here we go. What are you thinking here? Wait, wait. Baseline around the back? Right there, you're like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, that was. That if was Nick had bad. hands on on his knees, then it would have been a great pass. That would have been the <laughs> perfect, the perfect pass. Uh, Tyrese, what what about these these last couple of games? You know, you, you guys had a little bit of a rut, even in wins. You weren't shooting the ball particularly well, but the last two games, much better performance overall as a team. Uh, we like you said, we're young. We have what four or five freshmen, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just hard. You gotta get adjusted to it. And uh, Coach Cal and the staff are doing a really good job, just helping us settle in and play our game. Tyrese, Coach Cal talks about how there's so much being thrown at you guys, at the young guys. And I just, you, know, you look around, I mean, the people are still here. They're taking, they want to be a part of this. What was that for you to transition from high school to all this attention as, as a young basketball player? Uh, Coach Cal always told us we've got to block out the noise and stay focused. Uh, stay in tune to the team. Even the good noise when the pat on the backs come too, right? Great noise. you got to yeah. stay focused, yeah. stay locked in, and stay uh, with the team. Well, you, you made a lot of noise tonight in a good way. Tyrese, congratulations Appreciate on a great it. performance. Good Tyrese Maxey, remember the name. You're going to see a lot of them this year for Sorry. the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky wins it in convincing fashion. Final score, 81-56. Coming up next, it's women's college basketball, Rutgers and LSU. For Pat Bradley and our entire crew, this is Mike Morgan saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky.